Hello and welcome back. In this video, I would like to have a look at plugins for AutoGPT. So while preparing for another video on AutoGPT, I stumbled across this folder here in the repo called plugins. And I noticed that this plugins folder isn't available in the stable release of AutoGPT yet. And also if we scroll down in the documentation, we can also see there's a section called plugins as well. And at the time of recording, this plugins feature is not available in the stable release of AutoGPT yet, but we can use it with the main branch and I'll show you how to do that. So we can find out more about plugins by clicking on the plugin link and that will take us to this documentation for AutoGPT. And under this plugins section, we can find the link to the plugins repo. So let's click on that. And in this plugins repo, we can see a lot more information on what plugins are and how we can install them in our AutoGPT project. So let's quickly talk about plugins and what they are. AutoGPT out of the box provides quite a lot of advanced functionality, like the ability to generate images, access the web, create agents, etc. What plugins do is they allow for additional functionality to be made available to AutoGPT and it also allows developers to create custom plugins for AutoGPT. So if we scroll down in the documentation, we can see all the plugins that come standard with AutoGPT. As an example, there's a Twitter plugin that allows AutoGPT to access tweets via the Twitter API. There's also a plugin for email, which allows AutoGPT to read, write, and respond to emails. There's also a CNX plugin that allows AutoGPT to analyze images and create descriptions based on the image. There's also a Bing search API. There's also some third party APIs and I assume this is a growing list of plugins. It's also possible to create custom plugins and you can have a look at this link to see the instructions on how to do that. And basically it's a matter of copying this repo as a template and making your changes and then adding those changes to an archive. So in this video, we'll have a look at the existing plugins. Specifically, we'll see how we can install plugins in our AutoGPT project. And we'll also have a look at one of the existing plugins as an example. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at the email plugin as an example. And we'll try to get AutoGPT to do some research for us and we'll ask it to email the result to us instead of writing it to the console or to a local file. As for the prerequisites, you need AutoGPT installed on your system. I've already created a video that goes in depth in how to install AutoGPT. So please follow that video first and then come back to this one. But as a quick recap, the first thing we'll do is we'll copy AutoGPT to our local machine. But there is one major difference in the setup process. In the setup video, I showed you how to install the stable release of AutoGPT. But at the time of this recording, plugins are not yet available in the stable release, so we'll actually use the master branch. Note that you will get some warnings when executing AutoGPT on the master branch, but I assume that plugins will be introduced into the stable version very soon after this video comes out. Right, so what we'll do is we'll clone this repository by copying this link. We will then create a folder on our PC. In the address bar, type in CMD. This will open up the command prompt. We will then type in git clone, followed by the URL that we copied. This will now create this folder on our machine. We can then CD into this folder. We can now install all the dependencies by typing pip install slash r requirements.txt. We then need to rename our environment variable file. So that's referring to this file over here. We just have to rename this to .env. Then we need to open this file in a text editor. You are more than welcome to use Notepad, but for the remainder of this video, I'll be using Visual Studio Code just to make things a little bit more visible. In the .env file, we can ignore most of these values, but we do need to provide an OpenAI API key. So we'll replace this with our API key. We can get our API key by going to platform.openai.com. We can then click on personal and API keys. We can then generate a new key by clicking on create new secret key. We can give our key a name and we then need to copy our secret key. Please ensure to use your own key as I will be deleting this key after I've recorded this video. Now back in our .env file, we just have to replace this string with our key. Let's go ahead and test our auto GPT instance by opening up the terminal. I'll use the integrated terminal in VS code, but if you prefer, you can just use the command prompt as well. 
In order to run AutoGPT, we need to type in python-m followed by AutoGPT and we can then press enter. So after running AutoGPT, you should see something similar to this. And in the stable version of AutoGPT, you are usually asked to provide a name for your bot followed by the role and then followed by the goals. With the new version in the master branch, AutoGPT will try to generate the role, the name and the goals on your behalf by just asking you this simple question. I want AutoGPT2. What you could do is if you manually want to capture that information, you can just type in double dash and manual. And now it will ask you for your AI's name. I will call mine WeatherGPT, an AI bot that, that provides information on the weather. For goal one, we'll ask it to look up the weather in New York. And for goal two, we'll just tell it to terminate once done. AutoGPT will also ask us for our budget, which is quite cool. So we'll just leave that blank. So it's saying it wants to Google the weather. We'll just say yes. Now it's saying it wants to get the information from AccuWeather. We'll just say yes. Now it's saying it's got the weather and it wants to write it to a file. We'll just say yes. So it's saying the file was written successfully. So we should be able to see that file by going to the auto GPT folder. You can see a folder called auto GPT workspace. And within this folder, we can see a file called New York weather. And we get the text. The current weather in New York is nine degrees Celsius with fair air quality and rain expected for at least 60 minutes. In the terminal, we can also see that auto GPT said it's completed its task and it wants to terminate. We'll just say yes. And that's it. So our instance of AutoGPT is working. So let's go ahead and look at plugins. So the plugin I want to have a look at in this specific example is the email plugin. And what I'd like to do is have a look at how we can install the plugins for AutoGPT. We'll also see how we can set up this email plugin. And what I'd like to do is to get AutoGPT to send an email from my Gmail account to another email address. Or maybe just to keep things simple, I'll send an email from this Gmail address to the same address. So let's see how we can do that. First, let's install AutoGPT plugins. If we go back to the AutoGPT folder, we can see the plugins folder, but it is empty. And we just get this file saying, put plugin zips here. So the first thing we need to do is to download and install the plugins into this folder. If we look at the documentation, we should be able to follow these instructions. Step one is to install AutoGPT, which is something we just did. Then, depending on your operating system, we need to follow these installation instructions. For Linux or Mac OS, we need to execute this command. Because I'm using Windows, I'll use this command instead. So I'll copy this command. Then, back in our project, I'll paste in that command and press enter. So after executing that command, I can now see this zip file in the plugins folder. Let's go back to the setup instructions. So for step three, if you are using Linux or Mac OS, you need to run this command. So for Windows, I'll copy this command. I'll go back to the terminal and execute it. After running this command, I got this message saying all packages were installed and AutoGPT was then executed automatically. However, this time it's asking us a few questions. It's saying that the AutoGPT Bing search plugin was found, but it's not in the allow list, continue. I'll just say no. Then it's saying that the GPT email plugin was found, but it's not in the allow list. Do we want to load this? I'll just say yes. It's then saying it's picked up the scene X plugin. We'll just say no. The Twitter plugin, I'll just say no as well. So after doing that, I'm getting a message saying that the email plugin was loaded, but I'll actually not continue with this prompt and I'll press control C to exit out of AutoGPT. I'll just say yes to terminate. So now that we've installed the files for the plugins, we need to make a change to the .env file. If we go back to the setup instructions, we can see the list of available plugins over here. And next to each of these plugins, there's a location link. This provides additional setup information. So firstly, on this page, we're getting a nice description of the email plugin and the screenshot of what it looks like. We can also see some key features like the ability to read emails. It can auto compose and send emails. It can create emails and automatically save them to the draft folder. We can create emails with attachments. We can even customize the email signature. We can ask AutoGPT to monitor for emails and auto respond. And we can integrate this email functionality into AutoGPT when dealing with more complex prompts. 
So for the installation, we've already created our .env file. We've renamed the file. And now what it's telling us is we need to add this section to the .env file. So I'll just go ahead and copy all of this. And then I'll scroll down to the bottom of the .env file. And I'll just paste in that section. We then need to provide the email address and password. I will be doing this off screen, but what you need to do is type in your email. As an example, test.test.com. You need to provide an email password as well. And the rest of these settings should be applicable to Gmail. Of course, you can use any other SMTP email address. Just make sure that you provide the correct information in these fields. For the optional settings, we can mark emails as seen when AutoGPT reads them. This is where we set the custom signature. And we can also specify this attribute here, which will save the emails in a draft folder and not send them. If we want the emails to be sent, we simply need to comment out this line here by adding this hash value at the start. For now, I'll just leave this in and I'll populate these fields with my actual email address and password. And just a little side note, if you are using Gmail, you typically need to authenticate the user via the OAuth pop-up, which is something that AutoGPT cannot do. So in order to generate a password for AutoGPT, you can follow this instruction right here. So it's saying that for Gmail, we need to use an app password. So all you have to do is open up this link. So after clicking on that link, you will receive a pop-up asking you to log into your account. You then need to select the app. In our case, I'll just select other. I'll give it a name like AutoGPT. And after clicking on generate, you will receive a password in this yellow box. You can just copy this password and then use that in your .env file. I'll save the .env file. So after saving the email details, we also have to set this value for allow listed plugins. If we go back to the setup instructions, we can see this example here. But allow listed plugins is an array of plugins that we will allow AutoGPT to use in our project. I will simply copy their example and then paste that into our .env file. And let's go ahead and save this file. Everything should be working correctly. So let's go ahead and run AutoGPT by typing Python or PY for short, dash M, AutoGPT, and I'll run it in continuous mode. This way, we don't have to keep approving the prompts. So it's asking us if we want to load the Bing search plugin. I'll just say no. I'll do the same for SceneX. And I'll say no to the Twitter plugin as well. It's asking us if we want to run the Weather GPT app again. But I'll just say no. I want to define my AI manually. So I'll just type in dash dash manual. The name of our AI will be Communicator GPT. Communicator GPT is a communicator. For the goals, I'll say for goal one, send an email to this email address. And by the way, I do not monitor this email address for any emails. So please don't send emails to this address to reach out to me. So let's continue with this. We'll say send an email to this address and introduce yourself. And then we'll say terminate once done. Let's press enter and let's see what it does. So we can see this command here that says send email with arguments and it's setting the to address with the subject line of introduction with the body of dear Leon. My name is communicator GPT and I am an LLM, etc. So apparently it's done sending the email and because of that, it's terminated the session. Right, so let's go back to Gmail. We can see in the Gmail folder that we've got two emails sitting in the draft folder. So there's two emails sitting here, but the one is from a test I did yesterday. And we can see another email here. And this is the email that was just created now. And this is matching up with what we saw in the console. So great. AutoGPT is now able to send emails, but at the moment, the emails are simply going to the drafts folder and not being sent for real. So to fix that, let's go back to the .env file. And at the bottom of the file, we have this value here, email draft mode with folder. So I'm actually going to comment out this line and save the file. Let's execute AutoGPT again by running python-m autogpt dash dash continuous. And while this is loading, I'm actually going to delete these two files. So back in the terminal, we do not want to load these additional plugins. So I'll just say no for each of them. So now it's asking us if we want to execute the same prompts again. I'll just say yes. And let's see what happens. 
AutoGPT should send an email to this address from itself. So it's running this command, send email to this Leon van Sel Dave Gmail address. And it says that it's completed the task and therefore it's terminating the session. If we go back to Gmail, we can see this email in the inbox now. And this email was sent from AutoGPT. And we can see that email in the sent folder as well. Okay, let's try out a slightly more complex use case. So let's run AutoGPT again. For the plugins, I'll just say no to each of these. And let's create our new bot. So I want to say, I want GPT2. I'm actually just going to define my bot manually. For the name, I'll call it Research Bot. An AI that does research and emails the result. For the goal, I'll say, go online and find two trending topics on AI. Email the two topic ideas to Leon van Sale, dev at gmail.com and let's run this. And after a few seconds, we got this email back. So let's see what AutoGPT sent us. Dear Leon, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to share with you two training topics on AI that I found through Google search. The topics are one, the five biggest artificial intelligence trains in 2023 and two, the seven biggest artificial AI trains in 2023. In 2022. Well, I suppose technically AutoGPT did exactly what I asked it to do. And since it's completed its task, it actually closed down the session as well. If you have a look at the documentation on the email plugin, it does show you how, how to get AutoGPT to read your emails and reply back to them, as well as how to send emails with attachments. It's definitely worth having a look at the rest of the plugins as well, but maybe we can do that in a future video. I hope you found this video on AutoGPT plugins interesting, and I think it's a very cool addition to the AutoGPT ecosystem. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, please like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.